but you always want to outwork your potential. You know, as hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. I had a summer where I played basketball when I was like 10 or 11 years old, and here I come playing, and I don't score one point the entire summer. Really? Not one. If you got to get up every single morning and remind yourself how hard you need to work, you probably need to choose a different profession. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. I believe in you, and this channel is designed to be a part of your daily success routine. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew on today's lessons from a man who went from being a terrible basketball player at age 10 and not being able to score a single point in the summer league to becoming one of the greatest NBA basketball players of all time and winning five NBA championships. He's Kobe Bryant and here's my take on his top 10 rules of success volume three okay let's kick it off with rule number one have a champion's mentality when I played um, one of the things that I had to learn is how to get the best out of my teammates yeah and most people think it's a simple thing you know passing the ball you know but that's not how you make guys better you have to really affect their behavior. How do you do that? So, you know, like, you know, I would tell guys, you know, we got back to backs. You know, I don't care if we're in Miami. I don't care if we're in a great city of Chicago. We can't go out. We got to get rest. Right? Back to back games. Back to back games, yeah. right? Monday, Tuesday. You play Monday and play again Tuesday. But guys aren't going to listen, right? You're going, you know. Right. So, a few times say, all right, we'll all go out. We'll <laughs> go out together. Really? I'm, I'll drink with you, right? But the next morning, I'm banging on your door at five in the morning. Let's go. They're not getting Where are we going? <laughs> I'll hang out with you. Now you come hang out with me. Wow. This is what we do. All right, let's go. And we're at the gym. We're working out, right? We hit the bus. We go to practice. We play that night. And they're dead. And they're dead. And they're like, oh, lesson learned. Really? <laughs> lesson learned. So take them out once. Listen, if you're going to do that, do that. But don't let that compromise what we're here to do. Right. This is why we're here. This is why you're here in the first place. Yeah. Right? And if we're going to win a championship... We have to have that championship mentality That's it. and work ethic. That's it. So you got to show them, no, Kobe can do that and still has the energy to get up and do this. So either I got to meet that same energy or I got to keep my butt in my Go room. to bed early, yeah. <laughs> Rule number two, outwork your potential. I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work, is to learn, is to absorb, um, to be a sponge. Right? But you always want to outwork your potential. You know, as hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. And that's what I tried to do when I first came in the league. But, you know, basketball is such a direct competition sport that me coming in at 17, I hated when, like, my teammates would say, you know, I get hit with an elbow, right? Shaq would hit me with an elbow in practice. And, like, you know, <laughs> you know Nick Van Exel would come up and say, are you okay? I'm like, what? <laughs> and, Mal, are you okay? <laughs> What the hell's wrong with you? You know, so like I always had that extra chip on my shoulder. So like every day in practice for me was really trying to annihilate everybody that was that I was playing against because I wanted to prove you don't need to babysit me. Like I, I'm fine, <laughs> you know, and uh, and so it's always um, you know, that competitive nature, the work ethic, and curiosity because I asked a lot of questions. You know, playing with Byron Scott, I asked him a lot of questions. Eddie Jones, who was great at chasing guards off the screens, and I didn't understand how to do that. I would sit with him before practice, after practice. Um, Magic, um, James Worthy, Kurt Rambis, Kareem Abdul, all the Laker greats, I would always sit down and just ask him questions about certain games that I studied growing up. What actually happened there? What did you feel there? Why? You know, Bird tough to defend? Why? Because he looks slow as than me so he's like <laughs> I'm, I'm like I'm missing something so like tell me what I'm missing you know what I mean and so I would always ask questions and try to learn as much as I could rule number three learn from failures we talk about this often and we always talk about the fact that you can learn a lot more from the failures than you can from the successes and you have to figure out where those landmines are and then how to best avoid those or put or help entrepreneurs and ourselves included um, figure out the clues of where those landmines are. You know, not that you're gonna avoid all of them. Right. Um, but it's also when you do step on one, figuring out, okay, how do you recuperate? How do you balance back and you know, pick yourself up? Rule number four, be a long-term thinker. I had a summer where I played basketball when I was like 10 or 11 years old. And a very prominent 
summer league in Philadelphia called the Sunny Hill League, where my father played, my uncle played, and they were like all time greats and yeah. some stuff. And Will Chamberlain played in the league, you know, uh, Earl of Pro Monroe played in the league. And here I come playing, and I don't score one point the entire summer. Really? Not one. How old were you? 11, 10, 11. And you're playing against other 10, 11 year olds? Uh -huh. or, and you didn't score once? Not one. Were you in the game? I was in the game. How'd you not score? Because I was terrible. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That At happened. 10, 11 years old, you were that terrible. awful. I mean, I, you know, and I had these big knee pads on because I was no. growing really fast. I had socks all the way up here, and I had like the high top skinny, fades, yeah. like skinny as hell. And I scored not a free throw, not a nothing, not a lucky shot, not a breakaway layup, zero points. Is that when you think the mentality of hard work started to come in for you at that age when you yeah. failed so miserably, I guess, that summer? I think that's when the idea of understanding a long term view became important because I wasn't gonna catch these kids in a week. I wasn't gonna catch them in a year, right? So that's when I sat down and said, okay, this is gonna take some thought, all right? Mm -hmm. What do I wanna work on first? All right, shooting, all right, let's knock this out. Let's focus on this half a year, six months, do nothing but shoot, all right? After that, all right, creating your own shot. And then you focus, so you start, I started creating a menu of things. Mm -hmm. When I came back the next summer, I was a little bit better. Right? And I'm I you being like, I've got my jump shot from 15, I've got my Yeah, I got my jump away, shot from 15, my... I got my three-point shot, like just open shots, not miss open shots, right? right. Be able to shoot it with speed, because those kids are so much more athletic. Yeah. And then the next summer I came back, I was a little better. And the summer I came back, you the scored. next summer I was a little better. I scored. Yeah, you know, it wasn't much, right. but I scored. And this you know? is 12, 13. 12, 13. And then 14 came around, back half of 13, 14 uh, years old, and then I was just killing everyone. And it happened in two years. And I wasn't expecting it to happen in two years, but it did because what I had to do was work on the basics and the fundamentals. Well, they relied on their athleticism mm. and their natural ability. And because I stick to the fundamentals, it just caught up to them. And then my body, you know, my knees stopped hurting. I grew into my frame. And, and then your athleticism, once you have the fundamentals, exactly. the hard work, the mindset, and you tack on the exactly. athleticism, then, it's then, game then, over. Then it was game over. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So from 13, you're good, average still? I was, I was good, I was good. good. And then about, about the, like the end of my, third, like right when I was turning 14, I became the best player in the state. At 14? At 14. So from 12 to 14, you went from scoring zero to being the best in the yep. state of all ages. Yep. Rule number five, find your passion. We talk about hard work all the time. It's like, you know, man, if you got to get up every single morning and remind yourself how hard you need to work, you probably need to choose a different profession, you know? Because that shouldn't be there. I wake up in the morning excited to get to it. You know, if I'm not training, I'm missing it. If I'm not watching a game of basketball, I miss it. I, you know, there's no place I'd rather be. And if you have that feeling, then you're truly doing what God has put you on this earth to do. Rule number six, challenge yourself to grow. You were quoted in, on CNBC as saying that you'd rather be remembered for your role in jump-starting tech companies than your skills on the court. Can you talk to them? What's that about? I think you have to challenge yourself to evolve and to grow. And I, think, I couldn't think of a better message for you know, athletes in particular because it's, it's very easy for, for us athletes to kind of lose ourselves and our identity by connecting who we are to what we do. And I think that's a very dangerous zone to be in. Right? So... It's, uh, it's common sense to me to be able to say, okay, the next stage I'm going after with the same intensity, the same attention to detail, the same curiosity. Um, so of course I'd want to be better at that than I was in my previous career. That's a pretty high bar though. You have, you have enough energy left <laughs> for that orange, I guess. <laughs> oh, we're gonna find out, right? I mean, that, that's the thing. You, know, you, you go for it and you do all you can. You learn as much as you can. You continue to try, you continue to improve, you continue to evolve, and then you, you can see who you are, right? You know, 20 years from now, you can, I can look in the mirror and say I gave it my best shot and we did the best we could and uh, see where we end up. Rule number seven, keep going. There's a quote from uh, one of my English teachers at Lower Marion named uh, uh, Mr. Fisk. He had a great quote that said, rest at the end, not in the middle. And that's something I always live by. I'm not going to rest. I'm going to keep on pushing now. There are a lot of answers that I don't have, even questions that I don't have. But I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep going, and I'll figure these things out as we go, right? And you just continue to build that way. So that, I try to live by that all the time. Rest at the end. Rest at the end. Rule number eight, protect your dreams. 
dreams is um, they should be pure. And I, and I think a lot of times, you know, when we're born into this world, we actually wind up going backwards. And it seems like the more we mature, uh, the more responsible our dreams become. And the more governors we put on ourselves and our ability to dream and to reimagine. And it's always a fight for us parents and, you know, and for you guys to make sure that your dreams always stay pure. And so it's not a matter of, of, um, of pushing beyond your limitations or expectations. It's really a matter of protecting your dreams, protecting your imagination. That's really the key. And when you do that, then the world just seems limitless. Rule number nine, be driven. My journey began in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. At the age of three years old, my father putting a basketball in my hands and me taking it from there. Basketball was in Kobe's blood. His dad is Joe Jellybean Bryant. He played eight years in the NBA before uprooting his family to take his career overseas. As I grew older, we moved to Italy. While Joe was getting used to playing in Europe, his son was also making an adjustment. In Italy, not many kids were perfecting a jump shot, but Kobe Bryant was. Soccer was a big sport, so they had goalposts underneath the baskets on concrete courts um, where kids used to play soccer all day, and I would be one of them. And then after soccer, I'd stay there for another three, four, five hours just playing basketball. It was a different country with a different language. Even though he had his family, he was essentially alone. So Kobe looked inward and developed the relentless drive to work on his game. When his family moved back to Philadelphia, that time spent alone on the court paid off as Kobe announced his arrival to the basketball world. He was the top high school player in the country, breaking Wilt Chamberlain's scoring records, becoming a celebrity at 16. Kobe's next step may have seemed ambitious, but with his basketball pedigree and work ethic, it was an easy decision. Uh, Kobe Bryant, uh, besides being my talent, to uh... <laughs> take my time to the NBA. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is achieve greatness. Kobe Bryant now. He's going to be retiring. After I remember this. season one. You said, who is this kid? His 20th season, all with the Lakers. one of the greatest careers in basketball the history. The body just will not allow him to be what he once was any longer. No one understands what it takes to be great. The force that drives you to do what others don't. The sacrifices made. All with one purpose in mind. Push yourself to become better. The extra seconds, minutes, hours of work put into perfecting one's game. <laughs> Lifting yourself above the rest to make sure your name will forever be synonymous with one word, greatness. What does it take to be great? Work ethic, determination, drive. It takes ability, it takes a desire. Baylor moves on Russell again, turns and puts up a tremendous field goal. I think it takes years of, of players relying on you to take the big shot, make the great play. You know, do the things that bring success to the team. That's, uh, that's what it's all about. It's getting out and measuring yourself against others. And I think that when you have an attitude like that, that's what I think that's part of greatness. The first time I met Kobe, Kobe was just out of high school. He was out here for a workout, and I've never seen anyone work out as hard as, as Kobe. I've never seen anybody that prepared. He was 17 years old and was ready to play NBA basketball. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing. I think Jerry West was the one who said this. He said, I want this kid because this kid has more talent than anybody I have playing for me right now. <laughs> and he had a great team. <laughs> this is a kid who would never take a night off, even if it wasn't going well. It was always going to be trying to, uh, to slay the dragon. If you don't have that type of work ethic, uh, you don't get to enjoy the benefits. Out to Kobe. Oh, 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 what a way to finish! 
Now I've got a special bonus clip from Kobe on how to be a good team player that I think you're going to really enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Time to move from just watching another video to actually taking action in your life or your business. And if you're feeling bold, leave your answers in the comments below. Here we go. Question number one, what is your big dream? Number two, how will you protect it when people say that you can't do it? And number three, how will you keep going when you're not getting results? You know, when you're in, a, in this culture, in our society, you can do some phenomenal things individually, um, but they'll never reach their full potential unless you do them collectively. And you have to figure out how to do that. And, you know, Phil Jackson was great at that. Mm -hmm. and Phil, uh, you know, he wouldn't just coach the team or coach the game, but he'd read everything about every single player. You really? learn about your history, how you grew up, um, how you were raised, where were you, where were you raised, you know, he'll read every interview mm. and he'll learn about you and gives him a better understanding of what's motivating you, uh, or what your insecurities are, right? And then it just helps him communicate with you better or even push a button here if he needs to. There was a stretch um, in 03 uh, where Shaq was out with an injury and Phil called me up to his office and said, okay, we need you to really turn on the afterburners and start scoring wow. the ball if we have to win. So I did and I wound up scoring, I think it was nine straight games with 40 plus points. Nine straight? Nine straight games. And then Shaq comes back, sec uh, it's second to last game of that. And then Phil calls me up to his office and says, Cole, okay, I need you to dial it back. I'm like, why? Like we're winning, <laughs> I don't understand. Is because our goal is to win a championship. Mm. And we can get through the Western Conference with you playing this way. But in the East, you know, we, we can dominate them inside with Shaq in the post. But if you continue to do this, we'll lose Shaq. We'll lose him. His motivation, his excitement. What triggers him, right? He, so I need you to pull back so we can pull Shaq forward for June. Wow. And I'm, I just looked at him like, this is one smart dude. Wow, that's yeah, really smart. Yeah, that's one smart dude, man. So I pulled, pulled it back. So let me give you the one word secret to happiness. One word. This is all you need to be happy. It's the most important word ever. If you had to think of one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon. If you want more Kobe, check out the first top 10 video I did on him. The link is right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. We have to make as people, as individuals, if you want to be great at something, you have to make inherent sacrifices that come along with that. Family time, 